Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending April 28th, 2018. This time I think I will get the plastic story to be able to work because I'm going to a different website on this one. This is from independent.co.uk. How plastics eating bacteria actually work, a chemist explains. And I'll go down to the middle of the article here. In 2016, scientists from Japan tested different bacteria from a bottle recycling plant and found that Idionella sakiensis 201-F6 could digest the plastic used to make single-use drink bottles. That's the PET plastic. And they found that the uh, bacteria creates an enzyme that they've named PETase, P-E-T-A-S-E, after the plastic. And this splits certain chemical bonds in the PET, leaving smaller molecules that the bacteria can absorb using carbon in them as a food source. The main gist of the article is they talk about how plastics are so hard to break down and compost because of the fact they're so tightly bound together the the crystalline structure of the molecules are so tightly packed it's hard for any kind of bacteria to get to them but um, with experimenting with this bacteria they've even increased the efficiency of it and they think by creating a digester that operates at about 30 degrees centigrade um, these uh, pet eating bacteria will be able to actually digest the plastic maybe not completely It'll be able to break it down to a certain extent, like they even said in the article. This is not a total solution to the problem, but it's a good improvement to what um, has been happening. They said this bacteria is probably a recent a bacteria that's evolved from something else, too, with plastics only being around for so long. This bacteria is obviously uh, that eats plastic uh, was not probably around a couple hundred years ago, so this is something that's recently happened as we have had plastics. As usual, the links to all the articles will be down in the description below. And the second thing about plastics to this, it's kind of nice that I waited a week to do this because this article came out from the BBC News. Company sign up pledge to cut plastic pollution. The companies that ha are the source of 80% of all plastics that end up in landfill or discarded, um, such as Coca-Cola, Asda, and a lot of others, have signed this pledge that they are going to cut down plastic waste. And by doing it different ways, what they're going to do is eliminate difficult or unnecessary single-use plastic packaging through better design. They're going to make 100% of plastic packaging reusable or recyclable or compostable. And they're going to make 70% of plastic package is that makes, they're going to make sure that 70% of plastic is recycled or compost, composted what they actually use to uh, produce the products. And it says 30% of all plastic packaging to include recycled material. <clears throat> so anyway, that's a good idea too. The reason all behind this too is you've been hearing probably a lot of stories uh, lately about plastics pollution, polluting the ocean especially. They're talking about designing machines to clean up these big huge garbage patches of floating plastics and things like that. So um, it is becoming a really big concern and it just lasts so long and unless you design the plastic the right way, I mean I've seen the, the cornstarch and the other types of plastics like that based on things that can compost and break down. Um, they said another interesting thing in the uh, original first article there, too. Uh, we don't want to make the, the PET um, eating plastic too good either because you don't want it to escape to the wild and then just start eating up things. Uh, you know, that would be kind of like the problem with rust with metal or, you know, wood decaying and breaking down because there's natural organisms to do that. They don't want to make it uh, too good at what it does so that we have plastic stuff break down faster than we want it to break down. So <clears throat> next up. This one is from The Verge. Amazon will now deliver packages to the trunk of your car. New service in collaboration with GM and Volvo will launch in 37 cities in the U.S. It's actually already launched, and I checked. And in the Chicagoland area where I live, if I had a new enough car, now my car obviously isn't because it's a 2008, but if I had a newer car, say 2015 or newer, I'm not sure how far it goes back, but I think it's around those dates. But if I had a car like that, I could have Amazon actually deliver my package to where my car is parked. So. Last year, Amazon asked for permission to unlock your front door so it could leave packages inside your home, and a certain number of extremely trusted Amazon Prime subscribers said, okay, now the tech giant wants to do the same with your car. Amazon announced today a new service that gives its couriers access to a person's vehicle for the purpose of leaving package deliveries inside. But rather than use smart locks on a cloud-connected camera to gain entry, Amazon wants to use the connected technologies embedded in many modern vehicles today. The company is launching the new service in partnership with two automakers, General Motors and Volvo. I think that would be really con con uh, really convenient, especially for people that travel and things like that. If you uh, are traveling out of your area or on vacation or something, you happen to be in a major city and you have the correct car, um, what it is is just a one-time code that's sent down when the driver um, gets near your vehicle 
you'll actually send a code up to get permission to unlock your trunk one time and then I guess there will be he'll probably have a camera with him or something like that to prove that he actually dropped off the package in your vehicle and, and closed and locked the trunk. I guess what they're going to do for the drivers is if they don't properly close and lock your vehicle and do everything they're supposed to do, including leaving the package, they're going to make it impossible for them to uh, get approved for their next stop. So at the end, if he, for some reason, doesn't get your trunk down enough and it's fully locked or something like that, um, they just won't approve him for the next delivery. So they have to do it correct to be able to get authorization to do the next uh, their next stop. So. Um, that's pretty decent and a lot less expensive. Two hundred people were paying for that uh, Amazon uh, uh, in, inside your house thing uh, for the door lock and the camera and stuff like that. That could cost around two hundred fifty bucks to have them come into your house and leave a package. So, although I suppose that could be useful too if you have a lot of packages stolen and uh, especially if you can limit access to certain portions of your house to maybe a secure room to where the guy couldn't really you know go around. Not that it, I I don't think it really was a problem. I mean. Uh, you figure these drivers, I mean, a lot of these, especially the UPS drivers, are union drivers, and to get in trouble for something like that. Um, I just didn't even hear it in the news about any drivers getting in trouble, so if anybody's aware of it and they know about it, that any Amazon Prime drivers got in trouble for getting into someone's house to deliver a package and stealing stuff, let me know in the comments below. <clears throat> and last up, this is from CBS New York. China assigns every citizen a social credit score to identify who is and isn't trustworthy. Country determines... Your standing through use of surveillance video plans to have 600 million cameras by 2020. And they actually, there's a video here you can watch. I won't play the video, but a guy actually shows how sophisticated this system is going to be. It's going to actually, as people are walking around in the streets right now, it can identify if it's a, a man, woman, child, uh, different things like that. But I think eventually what they're gearing up to do is they will actually know, especially people in uh, towns and uh, cities and stuff like that, they'll know your exact identity and where you're going, what you're doing. So. China is rolling out a high-tech plan to give all of its 1.4 billion citizens a personal score based on how they behave. But there are consequences if your score gets low, and for some, that's cause for concern. And this uh, uh, guy right here, I think he's a writer, a journalist. When Leo Hu, Leo Hu recently tried to book a flight, he was told he was banned from flying because he was on the list of untrustworthy people. Liu, Liu I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Lou is a journalist who was ordered by a court to apologize for a series of tweets he wrote and then was told his apology was insincere. I can't buy property. My child can't go to a private school. You feel you're being controlled by the list all the time. And the list is now getting longer as every Chinese citizen is being assigned a solid credit score, a fluctuating rating based on a range of behaviors. It's believed that community service and buying Chinese-made products can raise your score. Fraud, tax evasion, and smoking in non-smoking areas can drop it. So yeah, those cameras will track you, and if you even if you end up smoking a cigarette in a, a non-smoking area, your credit score is going to drop down. <clears throat> now we kind of have this now, really. If you think about social media surveilling your uh, uh, where you go on the web and stuff like that, and sharing information. If you're a member of Facebook, Amazon, um, pretty much anything, Twitter, Instagram, your habits are being tracked. Now, right now, as far as I know, and there's probably more of it that you don't know, but as far as I know, it's used mostly for advertising. But who's to say the government couldn't set up something surreptitiously to uh, track people? I mean, I think there's even evidence they have in the past in isolated cases used people's social media and where they go on social media and uh, even tracking them through cell phones and things like that if, uh, if they got a warrant for it. So that's probably about the only thing keeping them in check right now is the fact that if they want to really track you hard for uh, anything but advertising purposes for you, basically grant permission by uh, using the websites, uh, they still do have to get a warrant from a judge, but who knows how bad it's getting. So, uh, yeah, this is right here. Uh, well, I think that the government and the people running the plan would like to, to go as deeply as possible to determine how to allocate benefits and also how to um, impact and shape their behavior. I think that's the real thing since it's a one-party communist country. The real plan is to actually shape the mass behavior. I mean, the last thing you want is another one of those uh, riots for freedom or democracy like they had before in uh, Tiananmen Square. So anyway, all the links will be below. Uh, give me your opinion on any of these subjects, what you think about it. You know, good, bad, uh, in between, whatever. So take care, everybody, and I will catch you next week.